Now, for more on reforms in China, I'm joined by Sarah Sue, live from New York. She's Associate Professor of Economics at State University of New York at New Paltz. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Rochelle. Now, as we heard there, Shenzhen has undergone a remarkable transformation as China's first special economic zone as the country was opening up. And now it's a major tech hub today. What's really been driving this success? Right. So um, Shenzhen has a close proximity to Hong Kong and Macau. So um, that was one of the reasons for its early success as a special economic zone. Um, also, Deng Xiaoping's um, approval of special economic zones, particularly in Shenzhen, um, in 1992, led to a big boom in local and foreign investment. And as a result of the increased investment, uh, Shenzhen has been focusing on improving innovation, high technology, modern logistics, um, as well as finance. So looking at the future of this city, what aspects of Shenzhen do you think present the most potential? Um, I think that the young population um, a lot of people are um, under 30. Um, also, there's um, a lot of ongoing investment um, in research and development. And uh, Shenzhen also has uh, very deep supply chains, supply linkages in the region. And what about the challenges for the city? What do you see as a, what do you see, see stands out for you there? Uh, some of the challenges, um, well, the main challenge includes um, rising costs, especially property costs, which um, some experts have feared might drive firms out of the city. Now, let's also look at these free trade zones. We know that back in March, China approved seven additional free trade zones. Tell us about some of the key progress and the lessons learned from these so far. Um, right. So there has been some progress made in terms of free trade zones. Um, they have proven the success of the negative list, um, which is a list containing sectors um, in which foreign investment is restrained. Um, so that has been successful. The negative list has been declining over time. Um, and it's also proven the success of um, faster company registration processes in these free trade zones. Um, and, and so in general, they're viewed in China as a success story. So which are some of the industries that have benefited by removing some of the restrictions on the negative list for foreign investment in China? Uh, so many industries, manufacturing, technology industries, um, as well as financial industries. Now, we also saw some recent measures on attracting more foreign investment into China. What's your take on the developments there? Uh, so there have been a lot of policies or a lot of policy points um, trying to bring foreign investment into China. Um, so the State Council released guidelines in January of this year. Um, and this included a list of many items, including liberalizing or opening up particular sectors to foreign investment, um, including the financial and accounting sectors, uh, manufacturing sectors, and also oil and gas production, um, and opening up <clears throat> further to uh, sensitive areas like telecommunications and education, um, and also providing favorable policies to foreign invested enterprises under Made in China strategy. Now, on the flip side, we've also seen some of China's biggest conglomerates adjusting to new measures and restrictions on overseas investment by Chinese companies. How important is this to the health of the overall economy? Right. So um, this has been something that's created a challenge to uh, Chinese firms. Um, I think that over time, the restrictions are going to strengthen the overall economy. So. Um, China has implemented um, three categories on um, overseas investments. And so some industries are banned, some are restricted, and some are encouraged. And it is hoped that um, the banned and restricted industries will help to discourage irrational investments. Now, we know that China wants to see more globalization. But in the face of rising protectionism globally, what challenges does this pose for China opening up its economy? Right. So um, exports account for about 20 percent of China's GDP. So rising protectionism around the world um, poses a huge risk to China's economy. Um, and right now, there's a lot of uncertainty about how those, um, those laws are going to play out, how the protectionism is going to play out. Um, <clears throat> and so as growth is reduced, if exports are in fact reduced, then China is going to have to slow down its process of opening up, and um, capital outflows 
uh, will have to be dampened so that uh, money doesn't continue to flow away from China. Um, also, trade policy with protectionist countries will um, tighten, and um, this will probably um, reduce China's efforts to um, improve its free trade zones so rapidly. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah Sue, Associate Professor of Economics at State University of New York at New Paltz.